everybody, this is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living. I'm not a registered or licensed financial advisor, planner, or broker, so nothing on this channel should be uh, taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. I also trade all of these things, so I probably have a vested interest in there. Um, but there's plenty of entertainment value and lots of education, so this will be awesome. For those of you who didn't know, my uh, subscription channel is live. So look at the link in the description over at CryptoInfluencers.com and you can see how I make all of my trades and what I do and what I think about everything. This channel is for uh, more hypothetical and looking at trends and the other one is for actual trading. So you might be interested in that. All right, good evening. <clears throat> Um, I was planning on doing this much earlier, but um, just <laughs> sometimes days just don't go this, the way I think they're going to go. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome. I did an hour on the stairs this morning, uh, did lots of, lots of good things today. It was just really awesome. But yeah, what a great day. Look at this. Um, before I jump in, I just wanted to hit two announcements. One is um, the my live... Uh, my live video is uh, tomorrow, Wednesday at uh, 12.30 12 Mountain Time. So uh, that's when I'll be hopping on and we can chat and ask questions. Hopefully it'll be a little more interactive this time. And then uh, just again, another reminder that on Crypto Influencers, uh, I'm giving away a um, $1,000 by December 22nd. So there's only um, nine more days to just subscribe for the free channel right here. And uh, 10 of you will get $100 and um, I'll send it to your MEXC global account. Okay, so with that, let's jump in and talk about this fabulous close. We just barely closed this 19 minutes ago. Uh, I guess it was an hour and 19. Yeah, time escapes me. Um, but anyway, Unbelievable close. It was 3.27%. And um, we are just touching the 50. I had drawn this wedge tracing what I thought the 50 would do. And I, I started it about a week ago. So we have absolutely followed this line to perfection. <laughs> and so I can go ahead and delete it now that we've finally interacted. I thought maybe end of the year we'd have to either decide or cross the 50. And we are really close to it, really close. I was expecting this entire time that we'd come up and reject off the 50, come back to our base, and then try again. And, and that next move would probably get us going. But you know, um, you don't exit the red zone every day. And every time we exit, if, it, if it's a failed exit, uh, the risk reward has improved. So every single time it gets better and better. The risk reward profile at uh, 17,800 is certainly a lot different than the risk reward profile at 2000 or 20,000. Not a ton different. That's why any of these would be fine for a couple years hold or a couple years entry. But it's looking pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, pretty exciting to see things moving. But yeah, I mean, I'm cautious, cautiously optimistic. There are certainly some problems still. Uh, the problems are that we, we have lots of higher or lower highs. Lower high after lower high after lower high. And this is going to, do, to be our next uh, line in the sand. We don't have a swing high here. Um, but I mean, if we potentially just went straight up here and, and matched this, it would be unbelievably bullish. <laughs> but we're gonna take what we have. Uh, the odds of us moving up to 21, 22,000 from here are not spectacular, but it's not out of the realm of possible. So this is very, very interesting. Uh, the last time we talked was just yesterday when we were talking about the weekly close and uh, there was some discussion on whether this was a reversal. Uh, it sure looks like a continuation after today's candle. So we're just going to be patient and see um, how things play out. Uh, it's amazing how a strong day can really improve the outlook. So if I put this candle into the pattern finder, um, this is the most 
like pattern. So we've been watching um, September 2015 for a long time. Uh, this is when we had a couple of drops. We had this move up and then we, a move down and then a lot of consolidation. And the, the date that we're matching most closely because of this move is um, October 6th. So we're still matching. <laughs> it's kind of amazing to me <laughs> that we have found a pattern and we found it weeks ago. Like we, we found it back almost, it was the first pattern we found after this little dip here. So we've been looking at the same pattern to see if we would follow that for like three weeks to a month. And it is still the most likely outcome because we've matched the scenario better than any other experience in Bitcoin. So out of the 10 years of history that we actually have charts for, <clears throat> from percentage move and our similarities, this is looking the best. And it's been that way for this entire time. So can we keep the uh, ball rolling? That is the question. And if we do, uh, we could just climb our way out. Like it really, it really could be um, a start of, of the new move. So we've been excited about this for a while. Um, yesterday, the, the data was pointing to a couple of bearish scenarios, um, but this candle kind of blew all that out of the water. We're showing more strength than weakness. So uh, our worst case scenario is our, is our closest variance, and that is that we have a day to recover from this. And then we essentially go flat because these are both the same outcome. And then we start climbing. Well, I mean, yeah, we'd start climbing from day two and then just keep on going. We'll see. Uh, this one actually looks more compelling. So September of 2016, look at this chart. This looks very interesting because we have a very similar drop and we've seen this pattern too. Uh, we were kind of playing around in this area for a long time, but because of this close, um, our most similar looks like we've, we've moved to this, this side of, of, um, of, a, of after the pop. And so because of that, uh, we have a couple of days of upside and then we have a little bit of, you know, kind of return back to the mean and then up again. So we're kind of following this pattern and it's kind of cool to see. <laughs> um, our variance isn't spectacular. We only have six spots that are within the range, but um, all of these look amazing. This is probably, you know, and, and this is the same pattern, but just we're at the top. So we're, we're moving here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I take the average of all of these results, this chart looks unreal. <laughs> like it's really unreal. <laughs> so is this on the table? It's on the table. Yes. Um, every time Bitcoin has done something similar, the outcome was we're moving up. Um, it makes you a little cautious because we've been in such a long bear market. It's hard to just be like, well, here we are. Let's go all in, you know? <laughs> So I still have a pretty good mix of longs and shorts, um, expecting that we will probably consolidate and kind of move sideways for a while. But I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. So I, I really, this is, this is really awesome. We're starting to get to the first phase of an answer to our FTX drop. Oftentimes, uh, when there's a strong drop, if you're patient enough, you'll see a strong move to the other side. Uh, this is this is our closest thing we've seen, and it's our only candle that has closed above our kind of bounce that we had after things moved. So we are hugging the 50. And so I've always thought that we'd reject and come back down. If we reject, I would bet we'd hit the 20 and then come up and try again. But I honestly wonder if the risk reward profile would change that much because if we did that, it would only be a week from now and we'd look at a price maybe $150 lower than where we are. So, um, I don't know, not too bad. <clears throat> if the bearish scenario plays out, um, it's possible that, you know, we could reject or we could fake out. And if we came back down and started showing more weakness and got below this line here, um, we could be in for, you know, the doomers target. All the, all the doomers out there think that we're going to hit 10 and 12. But man, I just feel like 
it doesn't take that much money to move a market. And I think there's a lot of money out there and there's only like 2 million, maybe two and a half million Bitcoin on all exchanges combined. And I just think there's enough money that I don't, I don't think we'll see those numbers. I just feel like the number of people who see the long-term benefits and the long-term, especially smart money that buys in when it's dropping like this, um, I just don't know if they'll let it. So, you know, I mean, it's a limited quantity. And anyway, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I can't s see the future, but I can certainly... Um, I can certainly point to 10 events where we've done the closest thing that Bitcoin has ever done and every outcome was unbelievable. So um, pretty, pretty awesome risk reward profile right now. Um, and Ethereum, absolutely amazing. Just barely closed. Same story though. We just barely closed below our 50, but look how close we are. We almost rejected, like our high was 1346. And our weekly, um, our weekly uh, 200 week moving average is at 1350 right now. So we only missed about like four dollars. So we're like we've given it a lot of time. If you look at our 200 day moving average, we um, we dropped below it on Ethereum January of this year. January of this year. This was essentially a rejection, even though um, it hung out for one day above and then we had a doji and then came back down. We had one day. And then the next time we touched it was here, uh, November, and this is an obvious rejection. And now it's coming back down and we're sitting at a lovely price of 14, uh, 14.28. So, uh, we're in the vicinity like when our when all three of our averages get down to where we can reach them uh, That's when you climb above them. That's when you get Heading towards green zone because you're you're getting price action above the three major out averages <laughs> Like there's a lot of beautiful things. I'm more excited than than um, Worried about the downside. I think the higher probability is that we've seen the bottom and we're moving up so very, very cool. Um, I, I don't think the S&P is impacting us too much, but I still believe that the S&P is dropping. I know we, we tried to open above our downward trend line, but closes are what matters. And we closed down here and we closed below the 200 day moving average. I just think, I think we're still moving down. I know there's a lot of excitement and hype and um, everything, but I think it's real that we're probably in for some serious recession and unemployment over the next six months. Um, will that impact Bitcoin? It's possible that it won't. I mean, it is possible. It is its own thing. And it is a flight to security when, um, when you know, it was built to be a hedge against inflation. That was the entire purpose of it. It hasn't traded that way. But um, it has its own it has its own mind. When when Bitcoin has a, a phenomenal day like this, and it sticks the landing where we've where we've managed to stay high after after the day's over, and then S and P started off with a lot of excitement, but did not stick the landing, and closed down here. Um, it's definitely they're moving in opposite directions. So even though it was a you know technically positive day it was up 76.76 percent but that just pales in, com in comparison to what bitcoin's doing so i haven't been worried too much about s p lately um just the formation of the chart and all of that uh this chart is also interesting to look at because we were watching this this channel and we almost dropped out we had a day where we were really close and then we opened really low touched the 20 and somehow managed to climb back into the channel. It was a close one. <laughs> and the next day we were, we kind of opened and we're kind of hovering in here. Um, but after this close, we're, we're obviously well within the, the channel boundaries. This is support off the bottom of the channel. The next move, you're supposed to hit the top of the channel. So that makes me wonder what will happen tomorrow. Will we close 
on the channel? Will we, when we move sideways for a few days, hit it? Um, how will that play out? So I, I still think there's resistance here. So if we do hit up to the top of the channel, we could even wick up to the, two, to the 100, um, but we'll likely close back in and we'll probably have to come back down to the 50 or the bottom of the channel to find support again. Um, that's if we're going to do something natural. <laughs> if we're unnatural and we just decide to launch for it, um, this has happened before. Um, the time it happened was here. Uh, let's see, I guess I've got to change charts so I've got more history. Um, it was it was this one right here. This gave nobody any warning. When the market was was convinced that we were moving, uh, and guess what year this is? Oh, well, this is 2019, I guess. But we had our we had our drop to the bottom. We had a show of strength. We kind of melted off consolidation. So this is this is months worth of sideways. But we created this massive ascending triangle right down here. And when the market decided it was time, uh, we just we went up 20% in one day. It was 18.45. It just launched. The structure was right. There was higher higher highs. Everything was was built in, and uh, nobody you know we had months and months of sideways. So the people that were reading this were able to get in, but um, anyone mo moving slow, this moved so quick, people were like, oh, do I wait for it to drop? You know, and it just never did. So. You have to, you know, I mean, we, we're in the bottom of the bear market. If we have the structure and we, if we have the support, there's nothing to stop it from popping. Like we've, we've got our chance to get in. So, um, yeah, we have, a, we have a very obvious line of resistance right at like 18,800. We've pointed to this over and over. And so uh, that is a logical place for us to resist and come back down and try again. But if we get a solid bottom base, come up, find a higher solid bottom base, and then start retesting those same levels, uh, things could move fast. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm just loving the fact that we're able to consolidate for a little bit more. Even our 100 is below 18,800. So we have two of our major uh, averages below this line. <laughs> below this resistance line. So it's just building up pressure. When we climb above these, it's gonna it's gonna go off nice. So lots of cool things. I'm loving loving the formation of the chart. Um, we may have a day or two to cool off because this is a big move. And especially hitting the 50, I think may, many people might be cautious here. But uh, if we if we reject, go down for a few days and then finally pop out of this red zone. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be tempted to put a decent position in. All right, you guys, that's pretty much it for tonight. I, I appreciate y'all listening. Hopefully, I can give out a hundred dollars to some people in the next nine days or so. And uh, with Christmas coming and everything, I hope everyone's getting ready and getting excited for all of that. Um, hopefully, Bitcoin will give us a, a little Christmas present by the. I mean, within two weeks, we could probably see some good action here. <laughs> all right, you guys, we'll talk to y'all later. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. Uh, make sure you keep those trades small. Uh, don't force a trade. Don't get impatient. And uh, if you want to see how all this works, please come over and check me out on the subscription channel at CryptoInfluencers.com. Again, the link is in the description.